Dan Herbert, instructor and course developer at Point Blank Music School. In this video, we're going to be introducing you to the basics of modular synthesis by taking a look at how to create a simple subtractive synth using the new reactor blocks within Reactor 6. We cover sound design using Reactor and other synths in our sound design course and diplomas at Point Blank, and you can study with us in London, LA or online. To find out more information, head over to pointblanklondon.com. So let's open up Reactor 6 and the best way to get started is by first entering edit mode by clicking on this edit button and then click on library and select reactor blocks. Next double click on blocks new ensemble in the lower pane and then this default ensemble opens up and provides you with some basic IO blocks already in place. To access the whole range of building blocks just double click on reactor blocks and you can now see eight categories to choose from. So if I click on bento box for example you can see there's nine blocks here or boutique has three and you'll also notice the naming convention so there's a three letter identifier on each block so amp for amplifier which will typically control volume OSC for oscillator, uh, FLT for filter, mod for modulator, pro for processors and we've also got SEQ for sequencer. So it's really easy to add a block just drag and drop into the structure view or you can also double click as well and then subsequently rearrange in the structure. If your window doesn't look like this then you may need to adjust your horizontal split or vertical split buttons so it appears as you want it. To show the panel just click on panel and there are all your parameters. So in Reactor you have two different views of an ensemble. The panel is where you'll adjust the parameters, basically the interface of your synth, and the structure view is where you connect up your blocks of modules to build your synth. You may find that the blocks here don't appear, it might look more like this, but you can easily move these around just by click and dragging and you can rearrange these in whatever order you want and it's important to realize that the arrangement of the blocks and the panel is completely independent of the signal flow in the structure view so to get a sound out we're going to need to trigger these modules from my MIDI keyboard so if I play a note you can see in the note in block it's flashing MIDI messages. So here in the structure view is the note in block and this is where the pitch information comes from your MIDI input. So I'm going to connect pitch to the pitch inlet of the oscillator. So the oscillator is going to make a sound and we're going to then route the audio output of that into the inlet of the filter and from the out of the filter for now I'm just going to go straight into this stereo fader. Just turn that down and just connect it up to the right outlet as well. So if I now play the MIDI keyboard, it's now changing the pitch. We can actually see what this data looks like if I click on this little debugging icon and hover my mouse over. If I play middle C, that's 0.5. The octave above is 0.6. The octave above is 0.7 or below. And anywhere in between automatically calculates it out. So if I just delete these cables, so either select them, hit delete, or right or control click and select delete wire, then it now goes silent. So the pitch information goes from zero to one over 10 octaves. So in terms of MIDI note numbers, it goes from zero to 120. It just makes it much easier. So just to reinforce, unlike programming normally in Reactor with the different events and audio signals, all connections in blocks are basically audio, so you can connect any outlet to any inlet. Now let's add an amp section, so just drag and drop. I'm going to route the audio out of the filter into the amp, and then out of the amp into the fader. And we want to control this amplifier using an envelope. So again, just drag and drop. And I'm going to connect the gate which is basically velocity to the gate inlet on the ADSR. So a gate will basically trigger the envelope, set it going, and then the output here will go into the mod A inlet. So that's the modulation input for the VCA. So that's all set up. Um, if I play the keyboard now, we don't hear any sound. So let's just rearrange our blocks here. And it's well worth getting in the habit of naming as you're going along. So Bento Box ADSR is selected. Come over to the side pane and click on this little icon here, which is properties. And then we just select over there and let's call it amp 
env. Good. Now, if I play the keyboard and turn up the VCA, we'll hear the sound. But I want the envelope to actually modulate that. So to set up modulation is really easy. I've connected it into the mod A inlet of the VCA. So come up onto the VCA, select A, and you'll notice now we get this little fader next to the parameter. You might find, depending on what module, if I select this one, you'll get several faders, depending on what parameters can be modulated. Anyway, all I'm going to do is just push it all the way up. So this is like the modulation amount. This modulation amount is bipolar, so we can equally we can go down to a negative value. Let's push it all the way up. And now if I play the keyboard and let go, it's now turning the signal on and off. If I increase the attack on the envelope, just increase the release as well, you can see how the signal is now being shaped. Interestingly, if the modulation source is positive, it will flash red here, or if it's negative, then it will flash blue. The other useful thing is if I play a note, you can see this light up. You can actually trigger the envelope simply by clicking using your mouse. So you can see there's a range of parameters to play with, and this will vary depending on which block you've loaded. So on the Bento box oscillator, we have a variable control here which morphs between the different waveforms. Got a pitch offset control. So you click here to offset in terms of semitones, or here in terms of sense. Any of these you can just reset by double clicking. And we can also set the pitch to frequency by turning key tracking off. And now you can see we can adjust in terms of frequency. Setting two frequencies ideal if you're going to use this oscillator as an LFO, or you can use it in certain sound design applications. Many of these parameters won't seem to do a thing, as it will depend on what waveform you have or whether anything is connected to the appropriate inlet in the structure view. So for example, on this block, you'll only hear the effect of the pulse width when there's a pulse wave present in the signal. Now, if all these different parameters and options seem a little overwhelming, there's a great feature which will help you out called Hints. So if you enable the Info button at the top and then hover your mouse over Control, it will give you information on the available options and what effect it has on the sound. You can also hover your mouse over the header of a block and get an overview for what this block is about. So there's a number of different oscillators to choose from and the oscillators in Boutique are a bit simpler. So let's just go back to here click on Boutique and then drop in something like Multi-Wave. And again, let's push this to the top. In fact, we don't really need these utility ones up in the top, so we're just going to move them down to the bottom there. So if we look at Boutique in the structure view, you can see the number of inlets and the number of outlets is far less, so it's simpler to use. So let's set this up then. So we've got two oscillators playing. Uh, what we need to do, I'm just going to turn off Info Hints and we're going to need to add a mixer so we can mix the signal of the two oscillators together so just making enough space it's well worth sorting out your patch as you're working so from pitch down here to pitch and then it's going to come back to bento box and here is a mixer so just drag and drop and so you've got four inlets here one and Two. So the out of Bento box oscillator into input one, the out of boutique oscillator to input two, and then we'll continue that signal through into the filter there. And let's just move the mix up here. So this is input one, input two. Let's just pull this down. now I've got two inputs I'll also switch from ABS mode to rel or relative mode and this will basically mean you won't hear the effect of the built-in saturator when summing the signals together also quite useful here because we've got input one here is actually change the order of these and label them so come to properties click there oscillator one here oscillator two and finally just move the mixer next to the oscillators. We can continue by adding some more oscillators or a filter envelope, but hopefully you can see how easy it is to build your own synth using reactor blocks. Make sure you check out the next video in this introductory series where we'll be exploring some more advanced routing and modulation. <laughs>